Winton Cerf and Robert Kahn. I'm not sure if these names mean anything to you today, but they are the reason why we all could join each other today at this platform. You see, back in 1969, there was an experiment conducted at UCLA and Stanford. There were two teams of researchers who wanted to transmit data between two huge computers, and those computers were literally the size of two small houses. The experiment failed because they could only transmit the first two letters of that word before their systems crashed. But 11 years later, Winton Cerf and Robert Kahn developed what's called the TCP IP protocol, which later became the backbone of the internet today. So the next time you log into the internet or join an online event, you may want to thank Winton Cerf and Robert Kahn for what they did. Now, they, might, they would have not imagined that after a few decades of them coming up with the TCP IP protocol, people will literally be joining online events from all over the world together. In fact, events is one of those industries which has not been disrupted in decades. Events, if you see, are still happening the same way the way they used to happen decades ago. Almost every other industry has been touched or disrupted by internet. You talk about banking, finance, hospitality, technology for sure, logistics, literally everything has been disrupted by internet. But events industry is one of those industries which has never been disrupted until now. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pavi Singh and I'm going to be your host today. Welcome to the episode three of our digital event series. Now, for those of you who are joining us today for the first time, we started this journey almost two and a half months ago when this whole situation happened. And a lot of event planners all over the globe, they started looking for ways to get their events online. You know, the first thing when somebody uh, faces the situation is to just go to Google and try to find information. And when you go to Google, it literally spits out a million results. Some of them are verified, some of them are unidentified. And event planners, of course, they did not have a, a proper source or a one-stop shop where they could find all information about taking their events online. So we decided to take matters in our own hand. And we decided to create a platform where we could have global event planners together on one single place, and we could learn about online events together. And today, I'm happy to announce that we have attendees from approximately 50 different countries. And I encourage you all to use the chat option on the right of your screen to say, to say hi and try and post the flag of your country and we're gonna see how global we have truly become. Now, today we're gonna to do something different. For those of you who attended our episode one and episode two, um, you would know that you know, we started using with, uh, with Zoom and then we got to our own platform called Give Me Live and um, we learned from uh, the, the feedback which we received from our attendees. And today on episode three, we've introduced two different breakout sessions. Yeah, so after the presentation, you're gonna have a chance to attend one of these breakout sessions. The first one is where you get an opportunity to talk to our speaker and myself one-on-one -on -one and get your questions answered. And the second breakout session is about engagement. So if you wanna find out more about how you can engage your attendees, feel free to join that breakout session as well. Today, we are also doing live polling, ladies and gentlemen. So right below the video streaming section, you'll see a widget called Slido. So you will have an option where you can submit your questions there. So feel free to submit your questions and we're gonna take them towards the end um, in our live Q&A section. We're also doing a live polling. So please have a look at the polling section and address these questions because this will really help us understand the kind of audience we have today. We're going to share these poll results right before our live chatting and live Q&A section. And based on what our attendees think, we're going to be having a chat with our speaker and see what he thinks about uh, the different queries and the different demographics our, our, our audience comes from. Now, let's have a look at the agenda. But before we go there, I just wanted to share some quick housekeeping rules. As this is a webinar, your mics are going to be turned off. However, feel free to use the chat option towards the right of your screen and post any message. You can even create a chat thread and talk to other attendees. Um, at the bottom of the screen, right below video streaming, you'll be able to see the Slido widget. So feel free to post your questions there. And if you scroll further down, you'll see some options like resources, agenda, as well as speaker profile. So feel free to take advantage of that. 
Now, I also wanted to mention that this webinar is going to be recorded, just like other webinars. So if you have any friends or colleagues who were not able to join us today, you will get an opportunity to send them a link and ask them to register and view this webinar later. Now, let's look at what we're going to cover today. We'll talk a little bit about what we discussed in our last episode. For those of you who, who attended our episode two, it was about the rise of the digital event manager and what are some tips and tricks which uh, event planners can use to become online event managers and start managing online events. Then we're going to jump into our today's topic, which is how do you manage your digital conferences? So we look at what exactly is a digital conference, uh, what are some of the formats uh, you can use while you're managing your online conference. We'll also talk about your stakeholder management. This is extremely important because managing speakers and attendees in a live event where you have a stage, when you have people coming at your event, is entirely different when you're managing an online conference. We'll also share a playbook where we'll share some ideas and some things which you need to do when you're managing your online conference. And then we'll jump into our special section. We have a special guest tonight. Um, his name is Zoltan. Zoltan is the co-founder of Hipter Agency, and he's also a TEDx speaker. Zoltan has just finished a big online conference on the 7th of May, and he's already preparing for his next one. Zoltan, do you want to say hi? Sure. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Great. Zoltan, tell us a little bit about your event. What was your conference about? So we uh, do mostly gaming and tech conferences. So the last conference we organized was for the gaming and the industry for in terms of compliance and uh, marketing tools, stuff like that. However, we needed to adjust the agenda now due to COVID-19. So mostly the talks were about uh, how there's going to be a restart in the industry. So basically, that was mostly what the conference was about. Oh, this is very interesting. I can't even wait to dive in deeper into our Q&A section where I can ask you more about these details. Thank you so much for joining us, Zoltan. Uh, for now, let's get back to our agenda and set, let's see what we have in our, uh, in our store for today. After we have uh, our Q&A section with, with Zoltan, we'll talk a little bit about the resources which we have for you today. Just like every other episode, uh, we have uh, something for you to take away. We'll give you some resources um, and some files which can help you when you manage your online event. And then we'll dive into the most interesting section of our webinar, which is live Q&A. So once again, I want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, please post your questions at the Slido widget, which you see right below the video section. Um, and we are going to take those questions towards the end of the presentation. Let's get started. So what is a digital conference after all? Before I dive in deeper and tell you what exactly is a digital conference and we talk about the definition of a digital conference, I want to tell you what is not a digital conference. This is not a digital conference. I know a lot of event planners have events which were scheduled to happen in the second half of 2020. And because of the current situation, they got rescheduled. And a lot of event planners were, were, were actually planning to take these events online. But like I said in episode two, it shouldn't be just about doing an online event just because you have your investment made already in a big event and you've invested a lot of money in that. It should be about creating value. So take a step back and think about why exactly do you want to do this online conference? What kind of value are you going to create? So if you finally decide to do a digital conference, it better look like a digital conference. This is not a digital conference. This is a webinar. It's for small scale events where people can come together. This usually in webinars, the audience do not have the opportunity to speak. Their mics are turned off and speaker or a panel, they have a discussion and the audience can listen. This is definitely not a digital conference. This is a live streaming. This is good when you have a few speakers who wanna do one way communication, but it looks good. So it is more suited for mass big events where you have one way communication. Now that we have talked about what is not a digital conference, let's talk about the definition. Before I dive in and tell you, before you can even read what's there on the screen, imagine a conference which you have set up where you have a live stage, you have attendees, you've got um, exhibitors, you've also got some sponsors, you've got all the seating arrangements set up. Now imagine that whole setup repurposed to be delivered online. That's a digital conference. 
a digital conference can last over many days. It can have hundreds of speakers and a lot of interactive content. Let me share an example with you. Microsoft just finished a huge online conference. This happened on May 19th and 20th. This conference went on for 48 hours nonstop. They had over, 400, over 640 sessions and a little over 250,000 registrations from all over the globe. That's a big online conference. These are some pictures from their planning team. So have a look at this. This just looks like those days when you used to do video editing. So they did a lot of video editing when they were doing this conference. They also did a few sessions from studio. So they did a, a lot of recordings from studio. They edited them. Then they put them on live streaming. They also did live sessions from studio. They brought a panel together. They discussed things. And this was all telecasted from a live studio. Here is an example of how they connected to a speaker remotely with slides. And here is an example of how they connected to a speaker and where the speaker was sharing her own slides. They also did some engagement sessions like online coffee. So this is a great idea for your event, ladies and gentlemen. So feel free to use these breakout sessions for more engagements and some things which are, you know, go up, try and go above and beyond, uh, beyond live polling and Q&A and all those things which have become really normal for these days, uh, in these days for online conferences. It is an example of how they connected to attendees live from their mobile, from their remote location. And they also tried to make it personal. You know, there was a breakout session where they brought in uh, employees and their families. There was an employee who was praying violin. So try and make it engaging and take it, you know, a little, go a step further and take engagement to the next level. In the end, they made everything available online on demand. We'll touch base on this a little later, but just to give you an example, an online conference is something which can be used over and over again. It creates much more value for your stakeholders, especially sponsors as well as exhibitors, because even after your event is done, you can post it online, you can get registrations, you can even monetize it by charging people to view it. And every time somebody logs in and views your online event or your online conference, guess what, the speakers are gonna, gonna get more exposure and everything is tracked. So it creates much more value for all the stakeholders. Now, what is a format of a digital conference? How does it even happen? What kinds of uh, digital conferences are there? So we have essentially divided them into three different formats. The first format is live. These are live digital conferences. When I say live, you can have your speakers join in live from any part of the world. What are some of the pros for going live? It's very simple to understand. You can adapt to latest changes in technology. If you have a new tool you want to use, you can just install it and go right away. Presenters do not really need to pre-record. You don't really need to do any video editing, but it comes with high risks as well. For example, what if something fails? What if the internet goes down? What if the speaker doesn't show up? So it's not really recommended for bigger events where you have hundreds of speakers, but in case you have a smaller event with about 10, 15 different speakers and you have done good speaker training, in that case, live conferences is good. The second format is recorded. This is where you'll be able to record these video sessions and then you'll be able to edit them and then throw them on live streaming. This is how you counter the risk part so that the risk becomes a little lower. It can be, it can be run fully automated. It may some, take some more time and effort to organize because it involves a lot of video editing, but at the end of the day, the results is much more secured and it comes with less risks. And the third one is hybrid. You've got some pre-recorded sessions. This really happens when you want to create a combination and get the best of both worlds. You may want to get some live speakers. You may want to have some recorded sessions. So you can combine both of them together and create a hybrid event. Let's look at some of the stakeholders. And this is very, very important because stakeholders management in an online event is entirely different than a live event where you actually have people flying in. Before we dive in deeper and look at the slides and what we have, I want to bring our speaker back online. I want to have a word with Zoltan and I want to ask him what was his experience and how different was it to manage stakeholders for an online event versus a normal event which happened uh, at a venue. Zoltan, how did you manage different stakeholders for your event? 
So it wasn't easy. So uh, we had to go back to the beginning. We uh, we organize six conferences every year, which is our conferences in our portfolio. So we just finished organizing a live conference in Prague uh, at the 7th of March, which was right in the middle when the pandemic was uh, doing the news. So we had to organize the next event in Tallinn on the 7th of May. So in Prague, everybody was asking us, are you going to organize the event? And we were like, of course we're going to organize. It's a boutique-style event. We have nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> after we traveled back from our uh, from Prague, uh, mm -hmm. all the countries were shut down, border, borders were shut down. So we need to quickly adjust. And we we already knew that we could not organize the event on the 7th of May. So we had to switch to digital virtual conference. Uh, of course, this we already had about 50% of the tickets sold for that event. And these types of events, they are we also have packages that offer also accommodation besides the uh, so we needed to come up quickly with a way in which to uh, ease the pressure on these companies. So we we decided to host a virtual conference but also allow people to join in a live conference in the summer once the lockdowns are over so it was basically one-on-one uh, -on -one talks with all participants uh, with all sponsors of the events uh, explaining them how conferences uh, virtual conference digital conferences work uh, which is not easy I, because, I completely uh, agree. I completely yeah, agree. because because people, uh, mostly B2B companies that are used to traveling all around the world for events, uh, think about digital conferences as webinars. So something that's free to attend <laughs> and, and that's it. You have the presentation. I agree. So I agree. We had to explain that this also gives the opportunity to uh, increase their brand awareness. It also gives them the opportunity to network, have one-on-one -on -one meetings online. So that's how we managed to save this event and uh, actually, we had to do two events in May. One of them we postponed until June, which is also going online, uh, also going to become digital. Mm -hmm. so, that's about it in terms of managing stakeholders. <laughs> well, I, I can only imagine what you have must have <laughs> what you had to go through. And I'm sure that a lot of people in our audience as well had to go through this. Some of them may have adapted to online events. Some of them may, may be still planning about online events. So this is great insight. And Zoltan, I can't wait to dive in deeper. Um, for now, let's get back to our presentation and see what, what we have created in terms of stakeholder management and see some ways you, you can manage different people attending your event. One of the most important stakeholder in your online event is going to be your speakers, especially in digital conferences. Speakers are one of the reasons why people show up because they bring in the content. So managing your speakers for an online event could be, well, I would say a little different, but it comes with some benefits as well. Imagine this, if you had to bring in a speaker from a different part of the world, imagine the kind of things you will have to do. You'll have to manage logistics, you'll have to check his schedule, make sure he has about two to three different days, including because he had to travel all the way, then you have to make sure everything is on schedule, everything he has, been, he has practiced, and then you have to arrange a practice session right at the venue just to make sure he's comfortable. Well, with an online conference, none of that needs to happen. All you gotta do is connect with your speaker and you have a, access to a wider pool of speakers because now all you need is a few hours of their time. You don't need them to fly all the way down to the other part of the world. So it overcomes geographical barriers. It is very cost effective. Like I said, no travel, no accommodation, no logistics. It mitigates risk of speakers dropping out of pre-recording. You know, because if you decide to record the sessions, then at the day of the event, you don't really need to worry about sponsors, oh, sorry, the speakers showing up at the right time. And then of course you can monetize it with exclusive sessions with attendees. Because you have access to a wider pool of speakers, you can monetize it by creating sessions where attendees get to speak with them online. So yeah, that's a great way to monetize them as well. Here are some of the tips you can use to manage speakers. And you know, you've learned this over a lot of events and I'm sure Zoltan has a lot of experience with this, but there are some of, these are some of the things which you need to take care of when you're managing your speakers. 
please ensure they have a stable internet connection. I can't stress how important it is. You really don't want the internet to go down when they're speaking live at your conference. Then, good audio and video quality. Now, I'm not really saying that you need to invest in you know, a new hardware, get, you know, audio, get mics or speakers, but just ensure that you have, you know, whatever you have, you're making the best use of it. So maybe try and find a presentable background, a place which absorbs sounds, there's no echo, uh, maybe find a spot where you have lightning right on the face of the speaker so that it looks good. Please ensure there's no lighting from the back, otherwise it doesn't look really nice. You can actually refer to hundreds of videos on YouTube just to make the video look nice. So you'll find a lot of tips and tricks. But, but the idea is, tell your speakers about it. Brief your speakers about it. It's really important for you to make your speakers comfortable with this whole setup. Then if you have really high number of speakers, let's say you are going beyond 50 speakers, I highly recommend that you record those sessions and do not actually count on getting and showing up online at the live uh, conference because you'll need a lot of people to manage that. We've also created uh, a speaker briefing template. So if you scroll down on the page, you'll find this resource. Feel free to download it and this will really help you when you're trying to brief your speaker for your next online event. Now the next stakeholders for your digital conference are your sponsors and your exhibitors. Now, unlike a lot of uh, meeting planners I've had discussions with, a lot of people had different reservations about uh, you know, proving the value of an online conference to their exhibitors and their sponsors. I kind of feel a different, um, I kind of have some different um, thoughts about that. I think it's not hard to pitch the value. It's just a little different. You have to pitch the value a little differently. I'll tell you how. On the screen, you see some unique opportunities which you only get in a digital conference. For example, you have measurable brand engagement. In a, in a conference where, which, which is happening at a venue, imagine when was the last time you were trying to try to engage your attendees and trying to gather data about what your attendees are doing. You had to set up an RFID mat, you would uh, you know, have your volunteers all over the conference trying to scan people right outside every session room. Um, you may have some other kind of scanners where you were seeing what kind of uh, you know, how many attendees you have at one single place. Well, at an online conference, it's very easy and it's seamless. No matter where your online attendee is going in your conference, it's all tracked. It also results in frictionless lead generation. In an event which is happening at uh, uh, a venue, your attendees is gonna show up at the exhibitor booth. The exhibitor is normally going to scan the lead, uh, maybe check uh, the details on their RFID tag, if they don't have any technology, maybe what they're going to try is they'll try and note down their details on their laptop or their device. Well, in an online conference, you don't really need to do that. In a, in a digital setup, as soon as your attendee shows up to your digital booth, guess what? Automatically, all those leads are collected in your system. And the best part is this can all be connected to your CRM system. I remember I was reading about this study where it mentioned that 80% of the leads connected at an event are never followed up on. And the reason is because there's no one single system which connects everything. Now with an online setup in a, in a digital conference, all you have to do is get this data on your page and automatically push it to your CRM system. So it creates a very nice ecosystem for your complete lead management. Now digital exhibition booths can be managed 24 by seven unlike a, a conference which is happening at a venue. You can actually have somebody join in live remotely managing your digital booth 24 by seven. You can have rich content, you can have a pre-recorded video of your company or your products, or a person available to, to do a live chat with anybody who shows up. You can also have online rooms. So let's say you have somebody on your page who's interested, you can quickly take them to a one-on-one -on -one room to have a conversation. One of the good parts about digital conferences is that you're not just creating value for your sponsors in terms of putting in banners and ads, you're actually creating a lot of rich content for them. You could share PDF files, sponsor videos, you can even show sponsor ads during breaks in your conference. So it creates much more value. And then in the end, remember I talked about how you can connect the whole system to your CRM, all your leads flow to your CRM system, where it allows you to do automated follow-ups as well. So the lead, it comes to your, uh, your digital exhibition page, it goes to your CRM, and an automated email gets sent out to that particular lead as a follow-up. So it, this whole process makes everything very easy for you 
as well as your sales teams. Here is an example of an online meeting room. So as soon as somebody shows interest, you quickly take them to an online meeting room and start having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Here is an example of a 24 by seven digital booth. So like I said, you can have rich content over here. So have a look at the product video, have a look at different options you have, the pictures, the catalogs, you can customize literally everything and it is available 24 by seven for your digital attendees. Now another stakeholder at your event is your attendees, one of the most important stakeholders actually. Now with attendees, you have some unique opportunities with digital conferences and you have some unique challenges as well. And there are more opportunities than challenges. I'll tell you how. First, you have a broader reach. For those of you who are looking at our chat box, you would notice that how we have people connecting from all over the world. We never imagined it when we started this webinar. But guess what? Because our reach is so broader, people from all over the world could join us. We have people joining us today from US, from Australia, Singapore, India, and a lot of different countries. You can do the same for your digital conference as well, because guess what? All they have to do is sit in their office or their homes to join your digital conference. It's a unique opportunity to connect with people from all over the globe. Your audience and your market size just increased. Exclusive access to speakers, it doesn't matter where your speaker is joining from. You can have your attendees connect with your speakers and you can even monetize that. It's cheaper and time saving. I don't need to tell you that you, you really don't need to manage any logistics. And of course, you're not leaving any carbon footprint. Now, when was the last time you guys stand up, you stood up in a queue to check in for a conference? That does not happen in a digital conference. Imagine even if you have a thousand people attending your digital conference, they all can check in together with one single click on their system. So it makes the whole process very easy, completely frictionless. However, there are some unique challenges as well, which you face with digital conferences. One of them is how do you keep your audience engaged? I've had a lot of conversations with meeting planners over the past couple of months, and this is one of the biggest things which they talk about, which they're concerned about. They say, how do you, how do you even engage your attendees online? Well, what we decided was that instead of talking about it, we're actually going to show you how you can engage your attendees, which is why I also want to remind you that we have a breakout session towards the end of the presentation. Uh, the second breakout is about engagement, where you can join and you can see how you can engage your attendees online. The, we have our team members where uh, they'll allow you to play games. We all also have some cool vouchers which you can win. Now let's talk about the playbook and discuss some things which you can actually do when you when you start managing a digital conference. Registration and check-in. This is extremely important for a digital conference. Gone are the days when we, you could use two different systems, one for registration and one for check-in and another one for making or creating links. You need to have one single system. It all needs to be tied together for a good experience for your attendees. Second thing is, it's, it's ability to scale. Imagine if you, had a, if you had a venue booked for a 1500 people conference and two days before the event, your client or your, or your senior management calls you that they're expecting 500 more people. What are you going to do? You're going to reach out to the venue ask them if they can increase the size or increase your contract. The venue says that, you know what, they don't even have the capacity of adjusting 500 more people. What are you going to do then? Well, in a digital conference, all you got to do is just talk to your provider, maybe increase the server space, upgrade the servers, and there you go. It's scalable. You can even go from 1,500 to 15,000 within a couple of hours. So it's highly, highly scalable. Registrations can also happen during live event. So even after the, even after the event has started, people can still register and they get an automated link where they can uh, log in and enjoy the live event. It also has more security um, access, you know, in a live event in, where you have uh, booked a venue, you need to hire a security agency, make sure there's no unauthorized access. In an online event, it's a little different. You need to ensure that nobody is Zoom bombing your online conference. Uh, nobody is uh, sharing explicit content. So security is just a little different aspect, but it is very important for a digital conference as well. Agenda. For those of you who attended episode one and two, I said it multiple times and I'll say it again. In an online event, mm -hmm. content is your event. So please focus a lot on developing your content. People are going to show up for your digital conference 
just because of your content. So here are a few tips and tricks which you can uh, um, do while you manage your digital conference. First of all, ensure that you have the right time zone set up. If you have people joining in from different countries, different continents, make sure you set up a time zone which is ex easily accessible for everybody. Make sure your sessions are not too long. Like I said, it's not easy to make sure somebody sits on their chair for, for two hours. Plus, breaks are required. You really need to, be, need to give an opportunity to people to enjoy the content in the middle, enjoy the break, take a breather, and then join again. And while you do all that, you also need to ensure that they are engaged properly. Talking about engagement, here are some of the things which you can do. And I'm not just talking about live chat, polls, and Q&A. These are, these are just normal things. Now we need to think beyond. Go above and beyond for online engagement and make sure people are engaged with your digital conference. You could do things like theme-based breakout sessions, speaker chat rooms, which we're going to do right after this, this presentation. You can also have some icebreaker activities, virtual karaoke, interactive games, and you're going to have a chance to win to play an interactive game right after this presentation. Here is an example of uh, how you can engage your attendees. This is an example of uh, Red Hat Summit 2020. See how they have two different breakout sessions with two different agendas. One is a game, second one um, is, is kind of a challenge. And then we have another example of the React Summit 2020. See how each breakout session comes with a different theme. It looks very cool. And if you have the right person who's managing these breakout sessions, they can be highly interactive and highly engaging too. In the end, I also wanna talk a little bit about risks. There are risks involved in a digital conference, just like there are risks involved in a conference which we do at a venue. So you need to make sure that you have a run sheet as well as a proper risk management planning. What happens if the internet drops off? What if the speaker drops off? You know, what happens when, who's gonna do what? Is your moderation team ready enough? Have they done enough trials? Is your speaker ready to show up live on the screen? So you need to make sure that all of these checkboxes are checked and do trials, trials, trials. Test, test, test. Ensure everything is right and everybody knows what they're supposed to do. Here's a resource which we highly recommend you download. So if you scroll down the screen, you'll see the digital conference tool comparison. Uh, we have compiled different tools which you can use for your digital conference. Please download it. And we also have created a, a speaker briefing template which I shared with you earlier. So please scroll down and download these resources. They will come in really handy. Uh, we will also post them on our website on our website webinar page, so you can also come back later and download them. At this point, I want to bring our speaker back, and you know, I have some really interesting questions for him, and uh, we can't wait to see what his thoughts are on online events. Before we start our Q and A, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we did a quick polling to understand uh, what kind of audience do we have. So the first question we had was, what do you think is the main challenge in running a digital conference? 41% of our attendees think that the main challenge is keeping attendees engaged online. Well, I'm really glad we got this response because we have the answer to it right here. Right after this session, please do join the breakout session where it's, the breakout session is called the after party and we have our team members who are gonna show you how you can play online games and engage your attendees. The second question is, have you ever organized a digital conference before? How did it go? 84% of our attendees have never organized a digital conference, but they do have plans and they're learning how to do it best. This is interesting. We have about 84% of the people who are willing to learn more and they've never done a digital conference. The next question is, what do you think of the future of digital conferences? 61% of our attendees think that digital conferences will be a component of physical conferences. Hybrid. This is great. In episode two, I also shared that 30% of the people who show up for your online event will show up for your live event next year. So this is great. Online events and, and live events, can, they can actually go hand in hand together and become hybrid events. Only 8% of our attendees think this is the future. Traveling somewhere to attend a conference is pointless. 25% of our audience thinks that digital conferences will be a new category competing with physical conferences. And just 6% thing, it's just a fad. We need, we need it now, it'll go away soon. This is very interesting, but like I said, 61% of the people think that 
digital conference will be a component of physical conferences. The next question we had was, how much would you be willing to pay for a digital conference if the price of the physical edition used to be $1,000 per ticket? 38% of the people said they will be willing to pay $100, which is approximately 10%, which is actually 10% of the ticket of the actual live conference. 14% think that they would be willing to pay $200. 5% think that they'll be willing to pay $300. 16% of our audience thinks they'll be willing to pay $400 for a $1,000 conference ticket if it's happening online. 8% think it's gonna, they're going to pay $500, and nobody thinks they're going to pay $600 for that. This is, this is great. This is really great. Now, let's jump into our Q&A session with Sultan. Um, Sultan, I have a bunch of questions which I want to ask you today to understand your event setup and what your thoughts are on about uh, digital conferences. The first question is, and I'm sure a lot of our uh, attendees are waiting to, answer, waiting to hear the answer to this, which platform or platforms did you use for your conference? So we did not have too many time to look for conference platforms, but we used the Deal Room Events, which is a, a platform from Finland. They uh, are a tool basically which was used by conference organizers to set up meetings uh, in, in the virtual space. So we used this platform, which proved to be very good. They also adapted some new things, so they are being basically transformed uh, to a digital conference platform. But I just want to point out that uh, in March, this was mid-March when we started to set up this event, I think in just five days I received I think about 15 emails from different platforms that were ticket sellers that they now have a virtual platform that where you can host your conference so I, there are many platforms you can use now it all it all depends on the quality they provide in terms of, uh, of, of video streaming which is important for your panel discussions or and also the opportunities that they provide for breakout sessions this is great, Zoltan. So it looks like everybody wants to get on this bandwagon of online events. So everybody is trying to yes. come up some kind of online yes, event situation. I, yeah. yeah, and I, I might add that also we've been uh, contacted about a week ago about a new platform which was launched that also provides virtual reality abilities for conferences. So you basically you can attend an exhibition in virtual reality as well with the option of also connecting from your computer and seeing the exhibition as a cartoon. Wow. wow, that's really interesting. And you know, the second question I have is, how did you manage your speakers? Was it tough? <laughs> it was tough. Uh, it's a good thing that you pointed out this uh, briefing for the speakers, which is which might have come in handy because we did not know about it when we organized the conference. Uh, it was hard because at first they did not understand how it's going to look like. I think they were also nervous to speak at the, at the digital conference. But we managed also to secure some, some bigger names, uh, which we could not have done without when they would have been required to travel to our conference, etc. And this is with our, also with our upcoming event where we managed to secure the executive director of Greenpeace for our tech company wow. where we speak about the environment. So, so, yeah, basically you can, but there is a negative side to all these uh, digital conferences. You mentioned that they are much easier now to book a speaker for an event. But I tell you that if you look at June, June, June and July, most of the speakers are doing maybe two or three digital conferences per day. So wow. I think this is also going to get crowded. Wow. I think that's because everybody is trying to get on online events. And, you know, I, I, I like to mention, and I think I've mentioned it in episode one and episode two as well, that um, normally most of these digital webinars which companies are doing, they say that it's, it's they're trying to turn their, um, uh, trying to create a platform, but within the first 10, 15 minutes, they just turn into a product demonstration. So if you join a webinar of a company trying to see, you know, trying to learn something, it literally ends up being a product demonstration. So, and this is the reason, one of the reasons why we created this particular platform that we did not want it to be a product presentation. We wanted 
we this is an honest attempt to create a community where people can come together and they can learn each other. It could be about a different platform. It could be about our platform. But we just come together and we learn with each other. Um, but Zoltan, you also touched on, a, touched on a very important aspect, which I think a lot of our audience members are not thinking about now. You you managed to secure the executive director, you said, right, for of Greenpeace. Yes. Yeah. This is huge. And... I think not a lot of audience members are thinking that when you switch to digital conferences, you're not leaving any carbon footprint. So imagine how sustainable it is. Do you, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, it is. Uh, <clears throat> either way, uh, there was a trend that conferences were turning more and more sustainable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but uh, given the circumstances by switching to digital, it's 100% it's eco-friendly. But given the consideration that there's still a server running somewhere that consumes electricity. But you don't have the waste with the flyers and magazine that you need to throw away or maybe even the food that is uh, left by the delegates at the conferences. So it's, it's certainly a move forward in terms of uh, environmental friendly conferences. And it, it depends. Uh, you also pointed out that in the poll, many people that... Uh, replied that said that digital conferences are either way here to stay. And I right. can agree with that because many event organizers are now adding a digital conference to their portfolio. So basically, even if the live conference, when they are back, they will still have this type of digital conference in separate. Very interesting. Very interesting. And OK, so how about this? What was good? What was bad? And what was ugly? <laughs> throughout this, the management <coughs> yeah, The good thing was that we managed to get uh, great speakers. Uh, and another good aspect was because our conference is mostly focused on quality content and networking, given that our boutique star conferences and uh, they do not have an exhibition. So basically, they are seminar type conferences. Uh, these speakers were really honest. And like I told you earlier, we adapted the agenda uh, to the current state. So basically, we were speaking about how to restart the industry after COVID-19 lockdowns are over. And people were not pitching sales now that it's going to be a fantasy land. It's going to be so awesome. They were really, really honest. And they told that it's going to be hard. And so basically, that was the good part, which was also signaled to us by the delegates. Uh, you mentioned the bad part. The bad part is that, uh, like I told you, we used to organize conferences. The live events are in uh, luxurious hotels, usually five-star hotels, where people, when they enter the conference, would say, wow, how great this is. We also have the great Buffett lunch and networking. So this was the bad part where we did not have this option of, of, of right. getting people, like that wow factor of the... And the ugly part, I think I can combine it with the bad part. I think this was, we, we all, you, all, you know also that you have this uh, networking style that usually starts at the queue when you pick up your badge and your, uh, your lanyard. That's also a networking aspect, which people did not have that. They did not have the opportunity to grab a coffee before the event and talk to each other. Very interesting. Uh, this is something that cannot be synthesized, I think, in, in digital life. That's, that's something that's missing. Very interesting. Sultan, I want to repeat this for my audience because this is, this is one of those things which we can only learn from somebody who has done, who has seen both conferences managing, being managed at a venue as well as a digital conference. So what you said is that when you show up at a conference in at a venue even when you're picking up your lanyard when you're grabbing a cup of coffee that's also networking and yeah. in a digital conference you know when you log into a digital conference you only have that set time for networking so we may you know people who are thinking about doing digital conferences you may want to think about this as well to how on how to create more engagement and networking opportunities for your attendees right from the point they they log into your online event so maybe think about that. So, so this is this is really interesting, Zoltan. Thank you so much for this. I think now it's time. Let's let's jump into some questions from our audience. Um, our first question is from Sandra. <coughs> Sandra is joining us from uh, Singapore, 
And her question is, how many backup digital platforms should we prepare in case the main one crashes? Well, that is a great question. <laughs> but I think you should prepare at least one. That's, uh, that's how you can be on the safe side. You don't need many other platforms to be ready to handle your load. It depends also on the size of the conference, basically. So if you're organizing a conference up to 500 people, you need a platform that can back up that platform. Uh, I think that if you're organizing a larger one, maybe like 10,000 people, you, you need to think about maybe having two. But uh, at this point, I think this is something that needs to be experienced by organizers. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I agree. Okay, we have our uh, second question from Paul. And Paul is joining us today from Ghana. His question is, what are some of the assets to sell to sponsors for digital conferences? It depends. Uh, basically, our company also has a media side. So we are also a news platform. So with a digital conference, you can only offer an online presence of that certain event. You can sell assets such as brand awareness increasing the strength of your brand by and also you can have a great selling point that that sponsor is supporting our event in such a, a bad time because it's a hard time for event organizers everywhere so each sponsor that commits to sponsoring supporting your event is somehow indirectly connected to supporting you as a company that's one asset Another one is, like I said, brand, brand awareness, increasing the exposure of a brand, uh, which can help. You can, you can have multiple social media uh, mentions of that brand, doing buzz around it, uh, inviting people to their stand if you're organizing a digital uh, uh, exhibition as well. Uh, you can think about anything, basically. You just need to be creative and use, adapt that, Adapt the things that you had at your live conference to a digital sphere. Right. Right. And I think we also touched um, on this while we were doing the presentation that there are a lot of aspects through which you can create value for your sponsors and your exhibitors. You know, there is there is a lot of thing you can track, a um, lot more things versus a conference which is happening at a venue. Every click can be tracked. Every move online can be tracked. Um, which creates an opportunity for sponsors to brand themselves. You can sell, you know, ad pages. You can sell them on leads. You can show them how many people have viewed their logo, how many people went to their website, even give them a booth where they can man their own exhibition booth. So these are some of the things which can be done to 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 create more value for the sponsors. Uh, um, I might want to add. I want. I would like to add that maybe you can try to sell a, a bigger sponsorship package, giving them access to the next year's event that you are organizing basically that way you are securing yourself an income yeah so you can have a have, yeah you can have a, a customized package which allows them for the digital version and the live conference great idea great idea thanks okay we have uh, our next question from simonetta and the question is which digital marketing techniques would you suggest to attract clients to pivot to digital events <coughs> digital go, marketing techniques. So I would go with social media and uh, engagement with uh, with your connections, basically, and your followers. But also do some type of uh, free webinars in the run up for the for the digital conference. Okay, so do like a run up of webinars as well as use social networking. That's great. That's great. Exactly. Okay, we we have our next question from June. And the question is, how can we handle large scale exhibition and ensure attendees are engaged? So again, an engagement question. <laughs> so you, uh, we saw a great example at one of our competitive competitor events organizers. Uh, you can show them, uh, depending on the platform you are using, you can show them uh, parts of the panel discussions that are happening. So basically when they are walking down the expo floor, the digital expo floor, you can maybe send them some type of short videos of what's happening in the conference. Uh, also maybe try to add, like I said, depends on the platform, 
maybe add some type of awards for how many meetings that person had at your event. So this is a, it's a good idea for them to use their millennia skills to <laughs> earn awards. <laughs> <laughs> You, can, you, you need to use your creativity basically for, for anything that you would like to engage with. I think also, uh, since we've been doing tech conferences, we, we, we've been speaking about the uh, augmented reality for quite a while, which uh, basically hasn't been put to much use at live events. But it can be put to use in a digital event because you don't need that, any eyewear or stuff like that, like at mm -hmm. live event. You can... Right send that information anywhere on a digital platform. Mm -hmm. You can look, look, look at uh, uh, augmented reality engagement tactics, which can be transferred to digitally easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. And I think we, uh, the audience are, is also going to get some uh, ideas with the breakout session, which they are going to attend uh, right after this presentation. So my team has prepared some really cool games uh, which you can be played online. Uh, so feel free to join them, and I'm sure you'll you'll have answers to most of your questions. Um, the next question is from Deanna from Canada. Welcome, Deanna. Uh, the question is, what is the ideal length of a digital conference? For example, three hours each day for two days, etc. Depends. Depends on the audience. <clears throat> for instance, we do b2b conferences with lawyers uh, legislators uh, c-level executives and we did nine hours of conference which was pretty crazy and i can tell you that we had 80 percent of people staying for all the panel discussions we only had one and a half hour break for lunch where which was also part of the networking but we managed to keep them on the on the on the platform but i would not go any further than and two days for a conference. We already seen some conferences that took place for a week, uh, which lost people lost interest after the first or two second days. Mm -hmm. So you cannot have people being engaged in that for a long period. Maybe two days is the maximum. And uh, three hours, I think, is too, too little for a conference. That, that's, yeah. that's a webinar, basically, a webinar marathon that you can organize for three hours. So you can go for six hours, eight hours. It depends. Okay. Got it. Got it. It also adds, it also adds to your selling point because if you have, let's say, eight hours of conference with multiple tracks, that means that you need to at least have 60 speakers, which right. adds value to your conference. So basically, you should stretch and get as many speakers as possible right. to extend the time. Right, because content and speakers are very important. That's what's your. That's how you're going to get your attendees, right? Exactly. Right. Great. The next question is from Jasper. The question is, what is the backup solution in case there is an internet or power failure? How oh, it depends. <coughs> As you, if you are a speaker or organizer, if you're an organizer, you don't worry. You don't have to worry much about it because the platform you are renting is secure. Uh, that's like if you have uh, a backup platform to switch it to. Otherwise, you should inform the speakers uh, when they enter the before they start entering the room that they need to ensure at least that they have a good internet connectivity. Maybe help them. Uh, one thing we did with some of our speakers is we asked them to join from their mobile from uh, mobile connectivity. That way you don't have this issue with power cuts, internet going off, stuff like that. So that's a good idea. That's a good idea. So yeah, if you join from your mobile connectivity, there is it's highly unlikely that you're going to have a power failure or uh, an internet failure. So that's a good idea. So and I think uh, with 5G coming into picture, it's going to be even more smoother. You know, the internet speeds are going to go really high and um, in fact, for some reason, I think that the mobile devices now are much are highly reliable, and I think much more reliable than your computers. Um, your computers may get heated up and shut down, but it's very highly it's highly unlikely that your mobile is going to get shut down. Um, so, so that's that's really interesting. Um, the next question we have is from Benedict. Uh, the question is: Since the cost of digital content <coughs> will go down, um, should speakers' fee also be reduced? 
of course. <laughs> <laughs> if there are any fees, <laughs> because, if there are any fees, right? <laughs> if there are any fees, because depending, uh, we have seen a lot of speakers approach us in the past. We never charge anybody for speaking at our events. Basically, there are many event organizers that sell the seats on certain panel discussions for a certain fee. Uh, we then never they're done. That. They're not speakers anymore, right? Exactly. We never did that. But we were approached by speakers that they wanted to ask to pay them uh, to do a presentation at our conference. We said, no, why? Because you are not, you are just, you want your, to sell yourself. Okay, it depends on who you want to reach out. But like I said, you should not pay now for speakers to, uh, to give value to your conference. Look for high level profile that are not requiring anything. I, I hope that I will not be attacked for this by any any big <laughs> motivational speaker or anything like that. You're, you're highly secured at your home right now. <laughs> Don't worry about it. See, that's another beauty of online conferences. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So uh, we the, the next question is from Karen. The question is: Do you think virtual 3D exhibitions will work? And what are your thoughts about them? They will. Uh, they have been around for quite a while now, but haven't been used. Uh, I remember, I think it was four or five years ago that I was invited for a human resources fair, which was organized in 3D digitally, and I did not give a thought about it. So, <laughs> But now it's a different thing. Uh, it will certainly add value because, like I told you earlier, even if there are platforms that allow you to engage in virtual reality. We all know that virtual reality devices cost a lot now. Right. And uh, no, not everybody can afford them. So 3D will definitely have the uh, advantage. It also depends on, uh, on, on the, the platform's scalability because we have event uh, conference organized, digital conference platforms, mm -hmm. but they, they also need to learn how to scale. And uh, it's just, I think they don't have the, the time and resources now to scale because <laughs> each platform are trying to give uh, promotions to event organizers to host their conference on their platform, giving them huge discounts. So everybody's in trouble basically in terms of funding, even platforms that host mm -hmm. the event. But it will catch on, certainly. The 3D will definitely be uh, a boost. Okay. Okay. Um, we have a question from uh, Nishu, and I think this is going to be the last question which we take, uh, after which we are going to head towards our breakout session. So if we have more questions or if somebody is willing to um, have a chat with us one-on-one, -on -one, please feel free to, uh, to join the breakout sessions. The last question which we have is, uh, the question is from Nishu. The question is, what are some learnings that we must take from traditional event formats before we go virtual? I think you should think about the uh, to boost the quality of the content because every time at the live conferences content was the biggest issue where where you also had an exhibition near the seminars and people were leaving the the, the learning rooms so you need to boost the quality of the discussion and Ask your speakers not to do product pitches. They should focus on the topics they should speak about. They should not focus on selling during your panel discussion. And this is something that you, you need to, to somehow make them do this because it's for their loss. Because you don't have time nowadays. You're attending a virtual conference. You're not attending a sales pitch. You, you want to hear something new because otherwise you switch on the TV and you have advertising. Correct. So, Correct, Zoltan. Very yeah, great. You should, you, should, you should work on the quality of the content which is now uh, taken into digital. Very rightly said. And, you know, I've, I've attended a lot of webinars and event, online events in the past couple of months, especially. And almost 80% of them, they turn into product demonstrations within the first 10, 15 minutes. And it's very annoying. Left. Yeah, then, then I left. Because it's so annoying yeah. that I... I expected to see some good content 
and I was looking forward to some learning. All I saw was basically a sponsor trying to pitch their product. So, and you know, I'm, I'm really proud that we were able to create a platform where we don't pitch anything. We don't even pitch our own product. This is just okay. everybody okay. getting okay. together and discussing different platforms. Sorry to interrupt you. We also have some banner listing opportunities at Hipster Agency and advertisement and post. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you want, I can do some advertising. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. See, it's uh, so that's how it is. I mean, uh, we and I. This is a great point that we have to make it clear to our speakers that please don't make it a, a product pitch. Um, and if you have to make it a product pitch, then you might as well sponsor something and get a sponsor banner or some sponsorship opportunities. And the speaking session, especially for digital conferences, should be very quality content driven instead of a product pitch. Um, I, one, one thing I would like to, sorry, one thing sure. I would like to add to this final question is that uh, <clears throat> you should also instruct the moderators if you're hosting uh, panel discussions. They, they should be in touch with your speakers early and it, because not all speakers are used to switching to this virtual scene. Uh, so they have this stress around them that they are afraid that they are going to, to goof off. So at least the moderator should be able to at least reach out two weeks before the, uh, the, the event and ensure them that everything is going to be okay. That, that's what I just want to add. Zoltan, you're absolutely right. And I experienced this myself the last few days. Uh, we just did a big event um, yesterday. And you know we were in touch with the speakers for almost two weeks. We did four or five different trials. We made sure speakers know, and you know, we are there with them every step of the way. But still, you know, at uh, you know, at, in the end, there were some things which could be, um, you know, somebody forgets. Even if somebody is late by a, a couple of minutes, it could actually affect a lot. So the more trials you do, the more testing you do, and the more familiar you get with a speaker, the better it is for your online format. You, I completely agree with you. Perfect. So. Uh, looks like we're right on time, and this brings us to the end of the presentation. That doesn't mean we are going away, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's just that the, the, the presentation has ended. Now it's time for us to join our breakout sessions. Now, I'll tell you how you can brown your breakout sessions. At the top left corner of the screen, you'll see a house icon. It's the home button. When you click the home button, if you scroll down, you'll see two options for joining breakout sessions. The first breakout session is where Zoltan and I are going to be available for a one-on-one -on -one chat, and we can go ahead and answer further questions or if, you, if somebody wants to get into detail, and then you can also be live with us on that session. The second breakout room is geared most, more towards engagement. Um, you can see how my team is actually, uh, has actually has set up different games, and you can take part in those games, and there's also an opportunity to, to, win some, to, to win some gift vouchers. Both these breakout sessions are free. So once again, just go to the top left corner, hit the, hit the home button. You'll see two breakout sessions and join the one which you like. Um, and Zoltan and I are going to see you there. Now, for those of you who are not joining our breakout sessions, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it was a pleasure having you with us. We will update the recording of this webinar on our website and we'll send you a link. Feel free to share it with your colleagues. Um, and we'll be starting working on episode four very soon. So we look forward to see you there. For those of you who are joining us at the, in the breakout rooms, we're going to see you there. And Zoltan, thank you so much for joining us for the main presentation. And it was a pleasure having you here. We learned a lot, and I'm sure our audience had so much, so many things that they could learn from you. Um, and I'll see you at the breakout session in a while. Yeah, thank you everyone for attending, and thank you, Pavi, for the invitation. See you later. Thanks. See you. Bye.